Hello, today I'm going to be painting up some of these plague bearers. I recently am getting back into the hobby and they didn't have these nice box sets back when I used to Well, the manual makes these very easy to assemble, a lot better than the metal ones from before. So I'll grab a little X-Acto knife and remove the mold lines and cut out the remains of the sprue. Doing my best not to cut myself. I actually prefer to use super glue instead of modeling glue because this super glue comes with this really nice little brush allows me to quickly, easily, and accurately place all the glue at the exact spots I need without any overflow or any chance of damaging the model. Well, I accidentally messed up. When I was cutting out this guy's arm from the sprue, it accidentally broke off and flew somewhere and I couldn't find it. So I adapted. I took another arm, cut it off, made it look like it was broken off, and then attached it there, make it look like his bone sticking out. I'm going to insert some pins into the models in order to make it easy for them to stick to a base and an easy place for me to grab during painting. Using a modified Dremel head with this little drill, I'll be able to easily drill in the hole. At first I score a hole where I'm going to drill, and then I carefully and slowly drill in back and forth as to not overheat and melt the entire plastic, and then I accidentally break through. I then get a paper clip, I straighten it out, and then I cut it down to size with some clippers. Now all the models are assembled, and they're drilled in and pinned ready for their bases, however, these models are not as detailed as the first metal ones that come out. They're too clean. They need some roughening on their skin. Too smooth. Way too smooth. They need skin disease. Using this Liquitex modeling putty, which has significantly gone up in price since I last painted models, and some model glue, I then begin to mix them together in sort of a one-to-one-ish ratio. Using a synthetic brush, I then take this paste on, and then I dab it onto all the smooth, flat parts of the model, all over. I want to make it look like this thing has some rotting flesh, skin disease, texture, and I use a dabbing motion to get the effect. I'm not doing brush strokes, I'm dabbing. Now all the models have been textured, but that still isn't enough. They still lack a lot of character or individuality. Now I'm going to use these giant tubes of green putty that I bought for 20 bucks like 5 or 6 years ago and hope that they work. And after a lot of struggling, they seem to work. I'm going to draw these out into a very tiny wire. And with this tiny wire of green putty, I will make maggots. Now using this razor sharp hobby knife, I'm going to try to not cut myself and cut tiny little slivers of the putty. With the extra putty I have, I'm going to mold the wound on this making the gaping wound, and then I'm going to mold the bone in it. Now with all these little bits of green putty, I'm now going to take some super glue, apply it to the spots where I want the maggot, and then I'm going to use a little hobby knife and then just push the little things on attach them well, and then maybe put in a little ridgeline detail onto them to make them look like maggots.
And now for priming, I'm now going to take this masking tape, I'm going to put it out here and then I'm going to attach all the models onto there facing up and then I'm going to use this Bright Touch Car Primer as my primer. I prefer it. It comes in white, black and grey and has a really strong grip and it doesn't obscure any detail and it's pretty cheap too. I can notably see the textured effect. Starting with some yellow ochre ink, I'm going to spray the undersides to create some depth and dark in the shadows. Using an off-white palette witch flesh, I then mix a little bit of water into the airbrush with it to make it smooth and then I spray it on the upper raised areas. Then using the brightest white I had, White Scar White, I then, with a very springy brush, I heavily dry brush the model in a downward motion from top to bottom. And what it did is it highlighted all the open sores, the gaping wounds, the maggots, and most importantly, the textured skin that I applied made it stand out very well. While that looks really well, the highlight really emphasize that rotting skin, that flesh, the open sores, it all stands out very well. Alright, time to try out these new contrast paints that didn't exist when I last painted. I'm going to start off with the Plague Bearer's flesh color, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to well, apply it all over the skin, but I'm going to try to avoid all the bone areas, or I want the white to shine through. Now trying out the Magos Purple Contrast Paint, I'm going to use this to coat the organs or the intestines that are spilling outside. But after a single layer of it, it just really doesn't seem to do so well. It doesn't cover as well as I thought it would. Then I moved on to the Contrast Paint Skeleton Horde and I painted all the bones, the horns, and the spine protruding. And then as it dried, I did multiple layers on the horn. So it would get darker the closer it got to the head. I decided to run an experiment and I used the contrast paint Golem and Flesh as a base and then I put the Magos Purple on top and it had a really nice rich color. So I based the intestines and the spine with Golem and Flesh to give it more rich color and then I would put on top the appropriate skeleton horde on the spine and the Magos Purple on the intestines and it really brought out the color. Using the Blood for the Blood God technical paint, I then filled in the open wounds and sores uh, that were all over the Plague Bearer, and it had this really nice bloody effect that I think really shines out next to the green skin. So for the boils, I used Nurgle's Rot and placed it on, and then tried to highlight it with the Wash Fugan Orange. However, it really did not stand out. I then tried the process again with Baylor Brown and Fugan Orange on top, but it just wasn't good. So then I tried to highlight it with Nurgle's Rot, but it still wasn't cutting it. So then I decided to switch to Bestigore Flesh and use the Fugan Orange, and it made a really nice, bright, colorful contrast to the skin. Now moving on to the magic of pastels. Pastels are really good for flesh and skin because you can create tones, bruises, nice colors. And since Nurgle is full of rotten flesh and different colors, it's perfect for them. So I scrape off a bunch of the pastel on and then I'm just going to brush it on. And then I'm eventually going to switch to darker colors and then eventually I'll switch to a darkish purplish blue that I'll put in the recesses.
Now with some heavily watered down Fugan Orange, I'm going to place layer after layer going towards the ripped open stomachs to emphasize and highlight the injury. Some areas the contrast of the pastels is too high, so I'm going to put a layer of the Plague Bearer flesh on them again. Now for the maggots, I start with Pallid Witch Flesh for a nice white bright contrast, and then I'm going to put a glaze of blood letter on it, and then I realize that it just looks ugly. I then try Lamenter's Yellow Glaze, and I just didn't like it. I then use Ushab, Ushab, Ushab as bone color, and then I realize it's just too bright and white. Now I forgot to record it, but I decided to mix Usha, Usha, the bone color and Lamenter's Yellow together to create that nice sickening, sickening white. And then I took a hobby knife and then I just carved in some more grooves onto the maggots to make them look more maggot-like, and I like the effect. For the eye, I use Fugan Red as a base to fill in the eye cavity with the wash. And then, using the bone color and making sure my tip is very sharp, I then put a dot right where the eye should be. For the sword, I used the Citadel Lead Belcher paint. After coating the entire thing and when it dried, I then used a layer of Nuln Oil over the entire thing to add depth. After the Nuln oil dried, I then took some more lead belcher and then I dry brushed it on to create some more of a highlight on it. And then after that, I then switched and got some of that Rise of Rust and just dabbed it on in several spots to see how it worked. And then I just moved it around and it created a nice effect. I then took Nihilok Oxide and then I just dabbled it all throughout uh, certain places where I think the riser rust was too heavily concentrated and too bright. Then I added a wash of Agrax Earthshade on top and waited for it to dry. I then dry brushed again with Lead Belcher. Now using some of these old square bases for a game that exists alongside Cadia, I'll use these as a test base for the actual base. Now I'm going to start by layering the base in Baylor Brown. Now the base is made up from the Liquitex modeling putty when it completely dries. Now using some of the Vallejo Pigment Burnt Umber, I then brush it on to the base. I then apply some isopropyl alcohol on top and then I wait for it to dry. I then take some Liquitex Matte Varnish and then just pour it on and brush it on. Because for some reason this matte varnish has a great glossy shine. The base looks good, but since this is a Nurgle army, I'm going to apply little bits of Nurgle's Rot into spaces and recesses on the base. I then decide to add some Nurgle's Rot to the blade. I then add a few watered down layers of Fugan Orange Wash to give the mouth a reddish appearance. Once the outside of the putty is pretty dry but still soft, I then mark where I want the plague bearer to go and then I drill a hole through there through the plastic. I then take the model and slowly make small indentations into the putty. A little bit will stick on the model but that's fine. I then varnish the entire model using the AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish which does an incredible job. However, it completely removed all the shiny glossy blood that was on the model, so going back and getting the Blood for the Blood God technical paint, I then repaint all the bloodied areas and open sores again.
Using the Liquitex gloss varnish, I then paint the organs, all the boils, and the maggots all over it to give it that nice glossy wet shine. Going back to the base, right after I have applied the alcohol on top of all the pigment powder and all the paint and stuff, I'm actually going to take some of this dry brown mossy stuff that I bought years ago and I'm going to apply it in small areas, I'm going to super glue it down and then I'm going to roll and crush it flat on there. I use super glue to attach the model to the base and remember those indentations I made in the putty before those are still there and when I press the model in it's going to be flush with the ground making it look like those are the actual footsteps and then after the models attached and the glue is dry I'll then round off the edge with Abaddon black and then I will continue to finish the base with some Nurgle's rot in the recesses that is made in the putty. The model is finished, but moving on to the more unique pieces, the standard bear, I'm going to dry brush with the white scar white. This will also give it sort of a little wood-ish texture onto the staff itself. Then using Agrax Earthshade as a base coat for the staff and for the severed heads. I'm going to add riser rust onto the standard or the metal parts of the standard bearer again, sort of like I'm dry brushing it on. I then use the Nihiloc Oxide and then I use it in little dabs here and there in recesses and such and then also in brushing motions downwards, in downward brushing motions on the front and back of the standard bearer in order to make it look like it's running down. I then use the contrast paint Magos Purple for the shadows and recesses of the severed heads. I then use the contrast paint Gullum and Flesh to cover the whole heads. I then use the Magos Purple Contrast Paint again and paint directly into the severed wounds of the heads.
I will then use Mornfang Brown to paint the stitches on the mouths and the eyes themselves. I will then use Fugan Orange to highlight the boils that are showing up on the severed heads. Some final notes. After I figured out how to paint it the first time, all the rest easily uh, fell into place. I was able to paint up easily the wound on the piper, and the bases surprisingly turned out very, very well. I really like the moss effect with it, and it really does look like these guys are corrupting the land. I actually really did like the white uh, standard tree thing, because everyone always paints those like a dark wood or stuff, but I thought like a white wood like you know like uh, white moss or that stuff that grows on trees sometimes that's rot is white so I figured you know that that fits I like how the oxide turned down overall like the color and the, essentially the tones from these things I really enjoy them these models would make Papa Nurgle proud they're all individuals they're all specially customized but what really helps with tying it all together is actually the blood effect because there will always be small little smidgens or accidents or stuff like that and the blood I'm able to tap it on to cover up basic mistakes or things that don't turn out very well and that pretty much helps a lot when you're able to just cover over mistakes instead of have to repaint everything and it does add a lot of character and individuality to each of the models. And now that we're at the end of the video, comment if you have something to comment, like the video if you liked it, and subscribe if you want more, because next on the palette is a bunch of Nurglings from the box, and also some Nurglings that I happen to have from years ago. I'm going to paint those up as well. It's the same model, but I have a big batch of Nurglings to paint next. Alright, see ya.